Welcome back to The Law Show. I'm Mike McLeod. I'll be with you for this segment of the show. Uh, as always, The Law Show is brought to you by the law firm, Kerrigan, Estes, Rankin, McLeod, and Thompson. Our firm has represented seriously injured people across Northwest Florida for 40 years. And our attorneys and very talented staff are particularly trained and have experience helping people who, through no fault of their own, have sustained serious injuries through the fault of another person. Um, so for this segment of the show, I thought it would be interesting and helpful to talk about a concept where um, that folks may not know about that may place you in jeopardy for being responsible in an accident for an injury to someone, even though you did not participate in the accident or cause the injury. Uh, and the concept is generally called vicarious liability. And we'll use some automobile accident examples. So we know in Florida and probably all states that someone who drives negligently and causes an accident is responsible to the person that they have injured. And a lot of um, discussion and investigation goes into uh, when we get a new case where someone's injured in a car wreck, how did the accident happen? Who's at fault and cause, which driver is at fault in causing the accident? And of course we know some accidents are very clear. For example, a rear end collision is uh, not particularly complicated as far as who caused the accident. And it's not hard to um, um, consider that somebody who's negligent, who runs a red light, rear ends somebody, um, is responsible for the other person's injury. But the owner of the vehicle that causes the accident is very likely also equally responsible to the person who's injured in the accident. And again, we call that vicarious liability. And it goes back to this concept in Florida law. Um, for a, a great long while, um, the courts in Florida and the law in Florida has basically said that the owner of a dangerous instrumentality is responsible if that instrument or tool um, causes an injury to another person. And um, way back in 1920, the Florida Supreme Court, in a case that is called Southern Cotton Oil versus Anderson, in 1920, the Florida Supreme Court ruled that automobiles are a dangerous instrumentality, even though the original rule talked about dangerous tools, inherently dangerous tools. The Florida Supreme Court ruled just over a hundred years ago that automobiles are a dangerous instrumentality. And so the owner of those dangerous instruments is responsible when those things injure another person. How do we apply that in today's world? If I loan my car to a neighbor, a daughter, a grandchild, a friend, and that other person causes an accident and injures someone, they are responsible for their active negligence. But as the owner of the vehicle, <coughs> I am equally responsible and liable under the law in most cases. So that <coughs> will be, uh, should be uh, something that kind of rings a bell with us, be cautious who you loan your automobile to. You're as responsible as they are in most cases if they cause an accident. <coughs> Now, the other interesting thing is, if I loan my car to someone else and they cause the accident, it's my insurance as the owner who is primary as far as paying the claim for the injured person. And the person who is driving my car is also insured under my policy, but it's my insurance that's gonna, as the owner, that's gonna pay first and the driver who caused the accident, their insurance, if the claim is worth more than the coverage I have, 
is going to pay second. So you have a real obligation and legal liability if you own the vehicle that someone else causes an accident in. So there are some exceptions to this Florida dangerous instrumentality rule that makes you the owner responsible for other people driving your automobile. One is called the repair shop rule. So when we take our cars into a repair shop to have the car serviced or have the car repaired and the technicians who are repairing the car might take it out for a test drive or to see if the car, how the car works or to see if the repairs been uh, effective. Um, those, uh, that is an exception to the dangerous instrumentality rule and the owner is not responsible in those cases. In rental car situations, Florida has a lot of rental cars and the rental car lobby in Florida has le severely limited the liability of these rental car companies when people they rent their cars to cause an accident. And there is basically a $10,000 cap on, li on the liability of rental car companies um, when their vehicles lease to various people who lease cars throughout the state of Florida cause accident accidents. It happens all the time. There are all sorts of rental cars on the road, but the rental car lobby has gotten the Florida legislature to limit their liability to only $10,000 in every accident. So that's a second kind of exception to the Florida dangerous instrumentality rule that makes owners responsible for damages that are incurred by their vehicle, even when it's driven by someone else. So when you sell your car, I think it's very good advice for you to ensure that the title gets transferred to the new owner so that if that vehicle shortly after you sell it causes an accident, you don't get a letter from a lawyer or a person that says, hey, we are going to hold you responsible for the damages, the injury caused by this car. And so there are some defenses to that, but I just think it's a good practice for viewers and others if you sell your car, you don't go through a dealership, you don't trade your car in, but you just put your an ad in Auto Trader or wherever people do it now, and you sell your car in a kind of an individual private sale, it's, I think, um, healthy to make certain that the title gets transferred r rather immediately so that your name isn't sitting on the title and with somebody driving around that you don't have any uh, control over. If you have <coughs> sold your car and, and the other person really has the beneficial ownership and control over the car, I don't think you are going to ultimately be held responsible for injuries caused by your car that you sold. But you'll have to go through some steps and a, kind of a nuisance to clear that up. So I think that is still a good practice. <clears throat> then finally, of course, if your car is stolen, um, then the other person doesn't have permission to be in your car, and that is a defense to you being responsible for injuries caused by your car that's been stolen and you don't have any control over <coughs> whoever uh, took your car. Now, there are some limits on liability of the owner, but they're fairly substantial. Uh, the general rule is that the owner of a vehicle is only responsible for $100,000 of intangible damages caused by someone who's um, injured by your vehicle driven by another person. There's some exceptions to that rule. If the injured person has tangible damages like medical expenses and lost wages, uh, you can still be responsible for those damages over and above the $100,000. So there is, I think the lesson in all of this for today's law show is there's some real exposure to the owner of a vehicle when they loan the, their vehicle to another person. You're equally responsible, liable, legally liable, and you can be primarily liable as far as how insurance may pay a claim. Um, another uh, kind of instance where vicarious, vicarious liability 
makes someone else responsible for another person's negligence. It's very common um, for teenagers to get their new license. And in Florida, one of the parents or guardians of the six, new 16-year-old driver has to uh, sign and authorize um, that they are legally responsible for their child um, if their 16-year-old, 17-year-old child causes an accident. And that's part of Florida's driver's license, new driver's license law. Parents still responsible for, um, in the early years of getting a license for their young teenage driver. Okay, the other big example um, of vicarious liability one person being legally responsible for the negligence and injuries caused by another is in the employer-employee situation. So employers in Florida are legally liable for the negligence of their employees if the employee is operating uh, in the scope and course of their employment. So if, um, you know, Automobiles cause a lot of injuries. A lot of accidents occur as a result of automobile accidents. Companies throughout Northwest Florida have drivers out on the road. If they're in the course and scope of their employment, uh, then um, the employer, the business, is responsible for the negligent acts of their employees. It's not all, it could be any circumstances, it doesn't have to be an automobile accident, but if a business has employees and conduct business and there's a warehouse or there's a department store, if a, uh, if a grocery store has an employee who either spills something and doesn't get it up, just leaves it or leaves it for a long enough period that it's unreasonable to be on the floor for a long period of time, Randy Thompson is a real expert in these premises liability cases, a real expert in them but the store is responsible for the negligent acts of their employees. Um, and that is a, a very common um, example of vicarious liability. And it's based on agency. An, uh, an agent who causes an injury through negligence uh, exposes the principal, the person the agent is working for, um, to liability in the event that the agent negligently causes uh, an injury. So those are the two big examples of vicarious liability that we see a lot in our practice of law. Um, owners of vehicles are responsible for the negligent driving of their car if they've permitted another person to drive their vehicle. And employers are responsible and liable for the negligent acts of their employees when employees do something that is careless, beneath the standard of care, uh, not prudent and, uh, and careful, then employers can be li legally liable in those cases. So these are the things, a couple of things that we see in our practice of representing and helping people who've been seriously injured in accidents is part of where we look for compensation for our injured clients. Uh, this ends this segment of The Law Show. I'm Mike McLeod, and we'll be back in just a minute with more of The Law Show. So stay tuned.